just going to give folks maybe one or two more minutes to join. Then we will introduce ourselves and go through the agenda for this evening and get started. So just one, one or two more minutes, make sure that everybody who can come in is joining and then we'll get going. All right, it is five thirty two. So we will begin our meeting. Welcome everyone. This is our Deer Park Branch Library virtual groundbreaking. I am Paula Bremheger, the library's Eva Jane Romaine Coombe Library Director. And first, before we get into our presentation, a couple of quick housekeeping matters. We are recording the session tonight. So if you aren't interested in being on camera, please go ahead and stop your video. Also be aware that it will be recorded and others may view it. And we do ask that you mute your mic when you're not speaking to make sure that everyone can hear to the best of their ability, those of us that are on camera and doing the presentation. So good evening again. Thank you so much for attending and spending time with us on this cold and wintry evening. We are excited to join you tonight for our design concept overview of the new Deer Park Branch Library. We're actually referring to it as more of a large scale renovation as it does involve a great expansion of space and enhancement of the library branch, but it's not really a relocation in that we are moving down the way and remaining in the Dillon Vale Shopping Center. So sometimes folks who aren't entirely familiar with the project will ask us if we're relocating, we're moving down, but staying right in that Dillon Vale shopping space. Many of you may know that we started this design process prior to the pandemic. And despite that challenge and being a portion of the way through the design, when the pandemic struck in early 2020, we continued on as we remain very committed and excited to bring you a great new next generation library. The support that the Deer Park community and surrounding communities demonstrated in our meetings in 2019 when we were out in the community talking about the facilities master plan in general, I know has continued and your enthusiasm is really deeply appreciated. Just as a quick review, this is part of our overall facilities master plan, which we worked to develop in collaboration with communities across Hamilton County, engaging the public at several meetings, actually a series of meetings, one at each library location and additional meetings of stakeholders and leaders too, as well as focus groups for those who were perhaps not able to attend one of the larger meetings. We've also attended community council meetings in Deer Park, Sycamore Township, and surrounding communities, including Amberley Village. Our facilities master plan was developed with six guiding principles in mind, which our board president, Ms. Diane Cunningham Redden, who is here tonight as well, will review when she talks to everybody in just a moment. Everything is of course made possible also through the generous support of our local communities who voted yes for a one mil levy in 2018 that is generating the dollars for projects, not only here in Deer Park, but also throughout the community. And in the near term, you may be aware that we're working in Price Hill on a branch that we hope to open here in the spring of this year, as well as Walnut Hills, 
and Madisonville, which will be opening in the next couple of years. And we are also doing many refreshes at branches throughout the county, so not as extensive as the projects we're doing here, but again, trying to make sure that we're attending to all of our locations. We do have 40 branches, a main library and a distribution center. It's about a million square feet of space that we uh, oversee and offer to the public. Additionally, we are working to do some design concepts for our main library, which is 500,000 square feet, so a very large building. We have a lot going on, and I am pleased tonight be, to be joined by several esteemed guests. In addition to Ms. Cunningham Redden, who is our board president this year for our library board. Also on the call and doing some presenting tonight will be Natalie Fields. Many of you know Natalie, she is the a fantastic branch manager over at Deer Park right now. We will also be joined by um, our friends from GBBN. It's the architecture firm that we're working with to do the uh, project. And that is Sean Cottingham and Amanda Markovic. I told them both I would do my best to get their names right. I know them well, but when I'm talking, they can introduce and correct if I'm wrong, so my apologies. If you can go on to the next slide, I just want to let everyone know how things will go this evening. So I wanted to welcome everyone and I'm going to turn things over in just a moment to Natalie Fields who will begin um, our more formal portion of the presentation. I do wanna shout out and give recognition to a few other folks from the library who are on the call but won't be presenting. They're just here to support us. We have Kristen Payne who is our capital projects manager, Beth Yoke, our chief strategy officer, and Molly DeFossi, who is our Chief uh, Facilities and Finance Officer with the library. So you can see that we have a lot of exciting information to share tonight. I'm going to, at this point, turn things over to Natalie, who will give a brief introduction as well. Natalie, take it away. Natalie, I think you're on mute there. Thanks, Paula. So hi, everyone. I am so glad that you are here with us tonight. And I really want to underscore how much of getting us here is because of you. For decades, you have consistently supported our library and advocated for the Deer Park branch. When we request local funding, you support our levies. When we ask for your input on improving the library, you show up. And when you showed up in July of 2019, you brought tangible, actionable solutions for the challenges that faced our current facility. So it is through your advocacy that we remain in the Dillonville Shopping Center. Um, you helping to influence the property manager here in management to greatly incentivize our continued presence in the plaza, like that made a huge difference in us being able to stay and still be good stewards of your tax dollars. So you told us what you needed and flexible, dynamic, delineated space for customers of all ages to use the library comfortably and productively at the same time. Tonight, we're gonna show you how we've applied that feedback you'll see that if you need a study space to work with your colleagues, you'll find it. And when you need access to computers and staff expertise, you'll find it. And when you want a quiet, cozy space to read the newspaper, you'll find that too. And if what you need is to shake your sillies out, get messy with art supplies, learn how to program robots, uh, work, with your, work with mentors and peers to be your very best self, that you're gonna find that too. <clears throat> this is what I'm most looking forward to about our new space, is realizing your vision of service to so many different types of library customers simultaneously. So I am really excited to share this next generation library with you tonight. And I think and I hope that you are really gonna love it. So thank you so much for making some time for me tonight. I'm gonna turn it over to Diane Cunningham Redden. She's the president of our Cincinnati and Hamilton County Public Library Board. Diane. 
Thank you for that warm welcome, Natalie. My name is Diane Cunningham Redden, the president of the Library Board of Trustees. My personal history with the Deer Park branch goes back more than five decades to when the library was in the Deer Park High School building. I would often go to the library after class for research or to study with my friends. My brothers and I were raised in Rossmore and in Dillonvale, so it is natural for me to think as Deer Park as my branch. I'm so glad to be with you this evening to share the design for your, your new branch library. But before we could create the design, we needed to hear from you to learn about your needs and interests and how that might be met through an expanded, redesigned library branch. Back in the summer of 2019, we held a listening session at the branch and we're so pleased to have nearly 50 community members participate. That strong showing was an indication to us that Deer Park and the surrounding communities value their branch library. And we appreciated the many great ideas that were shared that night. Some key themes emerged from those discussions. They were a larger space with different areas for different age groups and where a few activities could happen simultaneously without disturbing others. More than one person noted that the former TJ Maxx space was available and wondered about the possibility of the branch moving there. Meeting rooms and spaces for the community to gather, a robust section for children and teens with age appropriate furniture, materials and activities. Additional technology, such as laptops and maker equipment, increased accessibility for those with mobility challenges and Saturday hours. Your insights and ideas were reviewed by staff and the design team and helped inform the vision for the new branch. Our board of trustees also provided some overall direction to help the planning by creating six guiding principles that would shape the focus for an implementation of our system-wide facility master plan, which was published just over a year ago. Those principles were customer focused, diversity and inclusion, industry leading excellence, maximum access, operational sustainability and transparency. We are just in the second year of implementing the 10 year plan. And we are so excited. We've been able to focus on Deer Park in the early part of our plan. In the presentation that follows, I hope you'll see both these principles and the ideas you shared with us in 2019 at Amity. I know you're very excited to see what your new branch will look like. So now I'm going to turn things over to Amanda Markovic from GBBN Architects. Hi, um, thank you very much, Diane. Um, and hello to everyone. Um, I've been fortunate to have worked on community libraries for the past 14 years. Um, and they are really, truly a passion of mine. Um, when we uh, started working on this project, it reminded me of, a, of the very, very first library I worked on, which was in college. and. It was to design a library um, in a plaza very similar to this. So um, I was really ecstatic to have the opportunity to kind of work on a project that I've been imagining for a really long time. Next. Um, so yes, uh, Paula mentioned that this was a project that we've been working on um, during the pandemic. And um, one of the very first projects that um, our office worked on um, or started during the pandemic. Um, and at the first meeting, we were asked by Natalie and Paula and, and those, um, everyone at, from the library, you know, how does this design of the library respond to the pandemic? And really, this was the question we were getting on all of our projects. Um, but what we wanted to do was approach the project a little bit differently with, with that idea in mind. Um, you know, and what does it mean to truly consider a design that is adaptable to ensure a safe library experience to meet the needs of a pandemic, but how the space can respond to the needs of a community over time, such as poetry reading, new technology, or even as a food pantry and when needed. Um, but I wanted to throw this in because we, I wanted to remind ourselves that even within the six to eight foot distance that we're all required to have um, now and, and for this really near future, uh, we can still become familiar with one another. We can still become, rec we can still recognize one another um, during routines and such. So 
um, the library still can provide an opportunity to create those social connections. The, uh, the library originally opened um, in the Dillon Vale Shopping Center in 1972 um, and relocated twice since then. Um, and are in this current space, as you see, and you're probably very familiar with, that is around 4,000 square feet. And through data collection and the listening sessions, it was found that the branch has frequent challenges, overcrowdedness, and is in need of gathering space for the community. And access into the library from the parking lot is not very safe as you're trying to cross through that traffic um, going through the plaza. When the library started developing the master plan, listening sessions, as were mentioned by um, Natalie, uh, were held. And these word clouds were developed for each zone. Um, and the, in this, what you can really start to see are topics that revolve around space, so social, engaging, flexible, and dynamic spaces. They also talk to demographics of teens, adults, children, community. Um, and as Justin I attended the community meeting yesterday um, and Justin talks and, and states several times that the biggest word that would be on here and, and that they just haven't included because of how large it would be is, you know, the librarians and what an incredible resource they are. So from the session, these four comments were distilled to become the main objectives for the Deer Park branch. So a dynamic engaging space, inclusive for youth services, delineated space by activity, um, a, a design that reflects the diversity of the community's culture and the ages, um, and then considering uh, offering Sunday hours, um, really just to have more inclusive service opportunities. So it was this in mind that the, it was determined that the Deer Park branch will relocate, re, relocate to the larger location with those expanded facilities and opportunities for diverse service um, and in that location that's close to the current branch. Um, due to the opportunity to grow into that larger space and that this library is one that no, not only attracts from the most immediate community, but also the broader region, it was determined that Deer Park uh, branch will become a next generation library. So represented here by the very large dog on the right, um, the big next generation library um, will have a much larger and diverse range of services and space options for the community to gather, exchange ideas and support one another. So the former TJ Maxx was vacant and posed an opportunity for the library to become a new anchor um, for the plaza. Uh, you know, we're seeing more and more of these types of spaces become vacant, but it is incredible to see an institution such as the library take this opportunity of transforming it into a vibrant community civic space, a place that will speak to public engagement and investment. And with the large open floor plan, it really was a blank slate to be pretty creative within. As mentioned earlier, we started this project being very considerate of the pandemic we're in and developed a vision and a series of, of, of objectives to serve as our guiding light through the entire design process from early conception and, and, and even through construction. So the vision, uh, the new home for the Deer Park Next Generation Library will provide a place that welcomes, supports, and inspires the community, sustaining the mission to connect people with the world of ideas and information, it will be a place that encourages the community to gather, connecting with each other and with essential services. With the objectives of transforming the former TJ Maxx to become an accessible, inviting, and vibrant information and community hub, Flexible design that adapts to the meet, to meet the needs of the community and anticipates future service programs and technologies. Invest in the most immediate community while also attracting people from the larger, more diverse Northeast zone where a full range of services are provided from traditional to emerging. And to engage a broader com customer community from toddlers to older adults with spaces that range from collaborative areas and large program rooms to spaces for exploration and quiet focus. Along with starting the work on the master plan, the library rolled out their new brand strategy and attributes. 
This idea of learning without limits, as they state, brings a variety of diverse individuals together for a unique experience every time. The library provides the guardrails to explore ideas and make connections while still allowing for individuals to pave their own path. This is how CHPL continues to provide its resources and expertise, and we knew the space needed to support this through adaptability and thoughtful placemaking. We started the design process working with Natalie and her team to develop a plan that was welcoming, evokes curiosity, and is delineated enough to allow for individuals to explore on their own terms in order to achieve the vision and the objectives and to meet the desire of learning without limits. Here are um, a few images of a library um, that showcase how a central, active, and flexible space can and has been utilized. Um, on the left-hand side, you see as you walk in, it's this open, very active space, um, a browsable space. Um, and then on the right, these kind of delineated spaces from that. Next. Um, and so this is the concept plan. Um, and what this is intended to show is just diagrammatically how we organize the space. So at the center in yellow is a marketplace similar to what those um, preview image, previous images showed. Um, so by placing a centralized hub of activity allows for a barrier free entry and that when you enter there's ability to gain bearings, understand the layout and, and where you can get help and, and find services that you may need. Space also allows for the kind of flexibility necessary for the resources to um, shrink and flex to meet the needs of the community, where this is an overlap between the marketplace and adult and children's areas. Flexible design, um, you know, casters. Uh, finding that balance between um, fixed and mobile furniture shelving al um, elements um, to accommodate many programs and programs that change due, the, due to the need of, uh, for density or possible distance and still allow people to feel comfortable and safe in the space. So it allows for a space like this that um, where you can sit on a computer or a parent and child can be reading in the corner and have these intimate moments to also be a space that um, can be transformed into one that holds a, a large evening event to kick off a summer reading program. So um, as we move into the branch design, I'm excited to turn this over to my colleague, Sean Cottingham. Um, to uh, discuss the design. Thanks, Amanda. Um, as, as project architect, I've been involved in the project from the beginning. Um, and you'll likely see me if you're around the space uh, as boots on the ground, helping to bring this project to life, um, peeking in the windows and seeing us turn this vacant space into the library that everyone has so beautifully introduced. So I'm going to try and draw your attention to highlights and themes that you're gonna see throughout this. And then there's a lot to see. I want to make sure that you see that the vision is coming to life, um, but also leave you wanting to visit the space yourself. So as we try and take all that information that everyone has already addressed and look at this, this specific design challenge, how do we employ some tools to make these things happen? And I think as you see these images, some things to keep in mind, um, important connection to the outdoors, no notably, uh, natural light in a space like this is very important, especially at the challenges that the tenant space um, presents. Using efficient um, and smart use of color to make places, but without creating walls, right? We want this to be a flexible, but understandable and organized space. And we also want it to be a place where you understand that you're having experience of the Cincinnati and Hamilton County Public Library. Some concepts that we deployed through this project in particular, um, not part of the final design. These are images that are references of other projects, but to create active and durable spaces that are supported by clean, bright details and access to natural light. So we're gonna put the emphasis where the most activity is and let everything else be very durable, practical, and beautiful. Here's a developed version of the floor plan as you saw in the, in the concept diagram. And, this can be kind of challenging to read, but what I wanna draw your attention to is it's a large space and it has many different zones and we're 
trying to strike a balance between definition and flexibility. If it were completely flexible and open as the space is now, you might wind up with chaos and nothing organized, nothing going where it needs to be going. If you overdefine the space, you don't leave the opportunity open to adapt and change over time. So largely we have a balance between fixed elements, which I'll talk about in a moment, and the open spaces which are serving the different populations, children, teen and tween, living room space here at the front, adult section, the staff area to the right, all kind of anchored and tethered to what we're calling the marketplace as Amanda has already described. To highlight a couple of the important elements here, within these fixed landmarks within the space, some of the premier moments are the messy meeting room, which is a large meeting space that is flexible and can be divided into two smaller meeting spaces. It has visibility to the marketplace and it has two roll up doors that have access to the ch children's area, which allows for a craft zone or kind of expanded program activity here into this space that is equipped with a sink and is a cleanable kind of durable space. Another asset is the quiet room here behind the adult section. And you'll notice that it is um, the most secluded element in the space away from the natural activity of the children's and the teen and tween zones. You'll also see these green areas, which we're um, highlighting as the future flexible study pods. So while these are built in place, the interior partitions are designed with a product that allows for them to be demounted and rearranged such that this still could be a defined space, but could be used in a much different way than a, a quiet enclosed study room as it's shown now. We also have a community room with access to the exterior. And for reference, this is the main front door, which is just east of the current front door where TJ Maxx is right now. So if you think you're kind of entering into the center portion of the space into that large open area, and you have these anchors that help you frame your views into the main areas as well as become these quiet or flexible um, pod units. I'm about to share some 3D views and I'm going to re-reference some of the elements that you that I just addressed as well as some of the themes and how they play out in the space. So this is a view, it's a rendering from within the marketplace. Just behind us would be the, the front door. A couple of things I want to call your attention to for orientation. This would be the messy meeting room with the two roll-up doors. This is a view into the children's area. There's the adult zone here. And just beyond this uh, casework element is the quiet reading room. The study pods that are to the right here actually serve as a backdrop to the information and uh, point of contact. All of the furniture and elements that you see here in the central marketplace where the concrete floor is, are flexible as Amanda was describing and can be moved and rearranged to accommodate a myriad of different activities as the library learns and adapts to the needs of the community. A couple other things I wanna draw your attention to is trying to get natural light in at the rear perimeter of the space, as well as skylight moments that you'll see throughout a few of the slides. So those are new skylights that'll be bringing daylight into the space. Here is a view from the children's zone and for orientation purposes, this is one of the roll up doors of the messy meeting space, which is here in the distance. That's the door that's to the back that we saw a moment ago. And here we're trying to balance um, engaging tactile activities with the, the stacks themselves and all the program elements that would be what would make an engaging children's space, providing for that flexibility, that ability to find that little nook to read or speak with a parent, to play and engage with other children, to use the computers. It, um, there's a small reading nook here in the corner. Again, you'll notice the skylight in this zone as well, bringing natural light into the space. Another view from inside in the teen area, uh, we are in the southwest corner of the plan. So the entry is just beyond this door to the right. Um, and what you're seeing here are two of the fixed pods. Uh, the one that looks like it's made, has a kind of wood, wood tone covering and the other that has a green tone there in the distance. And to um, recall the conversation about the fixed but flexible, the glass portions of these pods are designed such that they could be taken away. So that what is two study rooms now might be an open alcove or a, a small meeting space or a maker space of a different kind in the future. You'll see that the opportunity for people to have choice in how they access and use the space socially for studying or by themselves to find that cozy nook 
uh, just in, off to the distance on the left, you'll see um, the gaming space. So again, in the center here, that's the marketplace to give you a sense of reference. Moving towards the outside, uh, one of the challenges that we had is to try to announce the entry while also communicating the size of the library and give it a presence in this long development. Um, we wanted it to be efficient and effective and not take away from some of the um, program and architectural spaces that we needed and wanted on the inside. So we designed a simple and efficient cladding application that announces the entry, uh, as well as some other moves that help to communicate the size of the library and enhance the exterior improvements, which are also coming along with that. Here's a view from into the parking lot. On the very left-hand side, you can see a series of the fins that define the left edge of the library and where the paint extends, the blue, that's the right-hand edge of the library. So it is a big space and we wanted people to be aware of the, the um, the change in how big this library is from, from before, we also needed to call attention to the entry. And what we have kind of been referring to as the flag, the series of vertical elements there, is a cladding system that is added to the facade that changes throughout the, uh, the day due to the sunlight interacting with the fins and also calls attention to the sidewalk, pedestrian way, and um, slower traffic and drop off area, which you'll see here in just a second. From this view, you can see that there's some sidewalk and landscaping improvements that follow from the crosswalk and give a more gracious and safe entry to the library. The way that the sidewalk comes out into um, the parking area allows for slower traffic and announces for everyone that this is um, an access, a place to access, and this is the entry to the library. Again, you can see the simple fin element, which does interesting things with the shadows and, and uh, transforms that facade and really takes ownership of it for the library. We have a little bit more here to share with you that you can do on your own. If you have the capability to use your mobile device to scan this QR code, you'll be taken to a fully immersive 360 degree view from a station point within that marketplace. And that's that's something that you can access and take a look at for yourself with a little bit more 3D than what was provided in the renderings. I'll leave that up for just a moment before sending it back over to Amanda to talk about where we are in this process and where we where we're heading. And this QR code will be av available at the end as well. Thank you. Um, so, I mean, it, if you think about it, this this project started two years ago um, with the very first um, the beginnings of developing the master plan, um, and here we are today at a virtual groundbreaking. Um, and to kick off the construction of the new space for this library. So very exciting and anticipating the opening of the new space in the summer of 2021. So um, very much looking forward to um, the development and seeing this come to life and um, excited to hear any comments and, and responses to what you've seen today. Thank you, everyone. Uh, this is Paula again, and I saw many comments in the side. It is kind of amazing to think of that size space, particularly for those of you who have been using the Deer Park Library for so long. Uh, this is five times the space, and it's amazing to imagine all the possibilities and the potential. We are capturing the chats and recording this, so there may be some feedback. I saw someone who had uh, just a quick comment maybe about that placement of the crosswalk. So all of that is good to put in the chat and we will review all of these things to make sure we're thinking through all of those. That's why we're here talking to the community. Um, there are, as I noted in the chat earlier, there were some questions that were sent in advance. Thank you. A few of them I think have been covered. So there was a question about the timeline for the completion and also whether or not the branch would be open during construction. So of course, we make every effort to keep locations available for communities, even during construction. For example, you know, over at Walnut Hills right now, we've closed that branch and we have a small sort of pop-up library that will function as the library while it's closed. Likewise, in Deer Park, we certainly will keep the current Deer Park branch functioning as long as we can. It's a little bit easier because we have a branch and we're not adding on to that branch or altering that area. 
there will be a pause when we do have to close both libraries for a moment where we have to move everything from one library to the other library, anything that we're taking with us. And also Natalie and her staff will need to be down working in the new library. So that is to say um, whether or not we can tell you exactly how long the branch will be closed. I do want to let everyone know there will be a brief closure, but for the most part, you will be able to enjoy your current branch while we're working on the new branch. We also had received a question about the new space layout, which we did um, review here. I saw a quick chat just about the community room and water. And of course, having those options are available as well. Um, so yes, we understand that water and sinks and things are important to particularly if we're having a room that people might be reserving and using for a wide range of uses both for the library and for their own use as well so yes we're we're accommodating those uh two we also had a question about whether there will be quiet space for reading and studying and we i think went through and noted those as well so yes we have that quiet room um, so we will definitely keep that in mind. And I know that that was something that we heard, the idea for having flexibility to both have some ability for folks to be social. We know information is shared and used in a different way now than it was when libraries, certainly when I was a kid, we had a card catalog and everything was kind of siloed and you individually interacted with information, that that's not necessarily the way information is provided or people interact with information got a lot of technology, it's a lot of uh, elements that are different, but we also know that people still like that quiet contemplative space. So we will certainly uh, do our best to um, make those available and they're in the plans and, and an important piece of what we offer. Again, with this size space, having that flexibility is really important. A couple of other questions we received about how the community might be involved in the new building. For example, there's a question about a mural and whether or not we could have the community involved in that. Uh, we definitely understand that there is a big interest around art. So what we are doing is bringing forward the branch, keeping the art in mind. And really we've heard from many libraries who have opened new branches, how valuable it is to have a location open for some amount of time and then understand a little bit more fully and work with the community on what might be a good fit for the art, so there will be art, but again, having the ability to be in the community and when we're there, learn what you all might want and work with you on that. So that's probably a long way of saying that is the intention, what exactly the final product of the art might be. We wait and see on that, but we do understand that that is something and we're really excited about that opportunity. And again, because it's a larger space here, we'll be able to do a little bit more around that. We had a question about makerspace equipment. I think Sean alluded to this. We may not have exactly a set specific makerspace, but with this amount of space, we can move equipment in and out. Natalie and her team can bring in equipment. Once we learn what the community might want, we can build that in. It's such a flexible space that we have the opportunity to build out a creative space that might include some of the makerspace equipment. So again, the flexibility here is available that we can fill that in as we need to. And I know that there will be a fair amount of technology that will be available as well. The staffing, we do anticipate in the same way that it's a larger branch, there may be new faces and additional staff there because we're going to be offering a wide variety of service in addition to the additional space it sort of all works together. So Natalie, will continue to work with us and she and her team will be central. They built such great relationships in the community. We know that they know you all very well and we're really excited. Natalie's been involved in the planning since the beginning and talking to her staff so they could relay what they hear and what they know about the community. There are some questions over here. There's a question about Sundays and we do know that of the locations that uh, are interested in Sunday hours, this is one. So that would be the intention always with hours. Generally, I always put a caveat um, because lots of things impact that, but this is certainly at the top of the list and that, that is the intention to move forward. That was clear even from the very beginning of that session that Ms. Cunningham 
mentioned in her opening remarks, a lot of you may have attended that. Some of you may be aware that that came up and we heard that loud and clear and appreciate that very much. There's also a question here about accessibility and I would uh, ask for Sean or Amanda to maybe talk about that because accessibility and inclusion were really part of the planning. It is, they are part of that list of principles that we use to make decisions. So if Sean and Amanda want to talk to some of these, that might be helpful as well to really talk about how those things will work. I think the person who's asking that uh, just wants to get a little bit more idea of how it would work in practice. Sure, so um, the it, space is fully accessible. The, um, the doors are automatic doors going into the library um, at both um, the most exterior and then at the vestibule. Um, the, the furniture at the marketplace, I, I see that you noted that it does feel like there's a lot in there. Um, it, is, it is movable, but it is also spaced adequately to move around um, for any mobi mobility impairment. Um, so um, it, it's just deceiving just how big the space is, right? Um, and, and the scale of things. Um, the toilet rooms are all accessible. Um, we have extra wide corridors that go, go to them. We also not only have the main um, toilet rooms uh, over by the community room, but we also have family toilet rooms um, in between the children's and um, teen spaces. Um, not only do we have um, for mobility impairment, but we've also been considerate of those parents coming with strollers. So um, how one might move from the entry into the children's space and then um, providing a garage for those, a virtual garage for those um, uh, uh, strollers. So. Um, we have thought through that, um, you know, all of the shelving is adequately spaced um, for them to be browsable by um, anyone and everyone. So um, it is definitely something that is um, very important to, to everyone in, in this project. Thanks, Amanda. And Mel, I think you did a quick follow up there. Appreciate that very much. And you were asking hey, about some specificity to how things that uh, our quick grab and go, such as the holds might be located. So again, I, Natalie's on the call and we uh, have captured that information. Um, I am guessing that the question is really about, you know, how are we gonna be able to get to everything? It's a big part of what we do. And um, yeah, exactly, I understand that. And uh, we certainly will keep that in mind. I see Natalie intently reading the comments. So I, I think that maybe what we'll say is, to capture these, I can assure you it is in our mind. And honestly, Mel, the other thing is, uh, there's one thing I know about the Deer Park staff and, and, and Natalie, um, they're flexible because they've been doing a lot in a very tight, constrained space. So they know how to move things and adjust as needed. Uh, this is gonna be a fantastic project and a great branch, but every time we open a branch or do a big project, there's always something that we end up the ground to make it better. And I know that that is something that we'll do our best to get it right the first time. But as Sean and Amanda really emphasize, there is so much flexibility here because we understand that needs change, things change. We want to be able to accommodate that as um, issues come up, challenges come up, and frankly, as opportunities come up. Speaking of opportunities, I know that maybe Tracy had asked about a, a drive up book job. Boy, Tracy, I, I had the same thought. We um, were not at this time able to offer that book job. I looked, we looked at the back. I know Matt, Molly is on the call as well from the library. And that wasn't something we were able to accommodate. Currently, we have a ton of parking. We have a lot that we're trying to build in. It wasn't necessarily space that could do the book drop, the drive up book drop for us. There are some in the zone. Uh, for example, Reading has one and we're adding more. That's a very popular service, particularly during the pandemic. Obviously, it's a great way to interact with the library get your items while remaining socially distanced in, in your own space. So uh, that isn't something here that we're able to offer at this point, um, but I do hear you. And again, the FMP is a large project. So building in those kinds of things where we can remains important for us. It's a great question. Natalie, I don't know if you have anything that you wanna to add to the folks or the 
questions here, feel free to jump in if you do. Natalie Smile, I see you're taking notes. Yeah, I would just like to reiterate what Paula said. We're gonna try so hard to get this right the first time. Um, but some things, you know, may not work as well as we'd planned. And, you know, we're counting on you to tell us that uh, so that we can make it better. Perfect. And Natalie, I think that addresses absolutely. Marianne is asking about that accessibility. Some of those issues you're um, bringing forward are often related to the small size of our locations. So we have in Deer Park, we have 4,000 square feet. So we, Natalie and her team have a lot of good stuff that you all want. They, they put them everywhere they can and do their best to get the stuff in there. So I would anticipate some of those um, issues really being ameliorated once we have all of this space. Doesn't mean we won't keep it in mind, certainly, and appreciate that. Um, but I do think that that's important. Uh, Claire is asking if we can just put that plan up on the screen. So maybe the one that Sean had that was a little bit more detailed, Amanda did a high level concept. So I think Sean had one, there you go, that really kind of addresses how it looks and where you walk in. Sean, if you want to uh, show where the entry is, maybe you can, yes, right in there. So that's coming up off of the street. And it, it can be a little overwhelming if you're not used to looking at these um, plans and things may change a little bit, but this is a pretty accurate high level concept of what we're talking about um, for that large space there as well. And Sean, the other thing that might be cool is if you can do the one that has the color coding around the community rooms and the quiet space, because I think that helps, yeah, that helps people understand that delineation of space exists, but it's integrated into this larger, um, this large kind of box store, really. I think the architects have done such an, a good job of trying to texturize that. You'll notice in some of the renderings, there are things that try and make the ceiling seem a little bit more uh, interesting. Um, when we talk about art and some of those things, we know that other libraries will often use that ceiling space because this is not a ceiling we built at this height, but to make it more interesting and to add to the environment and the welcoming and the interesting nature of that space, we may find some different ways that we can use that. Again, they may or may not all be present when we go live with the building, but as Natalie noted, we're gonna work to make it work for everyone and keep it interesting for all of you um, because you've been such supporters and I can tell that you're very excited. And I love the questions because we really want this to work well for everyone. We have just a couple minutes left. Ms. Redden, I don't know if you have anything you'd like to add. Oh, I see another question uh, about carpeting. So Sean, you had talked about the floor. So I perhaps um, Sean and Amanda could address this question of carpeting versus non-carpeted areas. Yeah, what, what you're seeing here is that the marketplace is the um, finished concrete floor and then each zone at the, at the perimeter has carpeting um, wall to wall as well as these kind of what we've been calling area rugs that help to anchor these spaces, the stacks of books here, the living room, um, even defining other zones within the adult space. So yes, absolutely there is carpeting in the space. And, and again, this is such a great space for flexibility and we've really worked hard to make it uh, delineated so that it is interesting and, and texturized. We don't have an exact date of the opening yet. Molly, I don't know if you have, a, or Amanda, you had the timeline. I don't know if we have a general target date we would be able to offer at this point. And we will let you know just as soon as we have more direct information too. Right now we're shooting for August. And then the self checkout stations in the diagram as well. And I think Sean is, yeah. Can I speak to that? Oh, of course, Natalie. Oh, of course I just, oh yeah, Sean was pointing to them. Thank you, Sean. Um, so to the point of, you know, if you order your materials and you know what you want and just kind of like to come in and come out, um, Sean, I'm gonna kind of walk them to the holds area. So you come in and Sean is circling around where we expect our holds to be. There is a self check station just kind of right beyond the holds. And then just beyond that little self-check station is our main service point. 
So, you know, if you're having any troubles with any of that, that your library staff is going to be right there. And then down the hallway to the right are a section of restrooms, They're not the only restrooms in the facility, but we have choices of restrooms with multiple stalls, as well as um, family restrooms that um, will be, you know, fully accessible. So I don't know if that walkthrough kind of helps folks envision what's happening, um, but that's where we're going. Thank you, Natalie. That certainly is helpful. I know we talked a lot about those elements because we know they're important. Uh, and Marianne had made a comment there about the carpet. Thank you. We will again capture this and record this so that we remember to consider all those and communicate to everybody what's going on. Um, again, uh, Ms. Redden, I don't know if you have anything you'd like to add to the group. I don't want to, I know that this is a branch that you're very familiar with and a community near and dear to your heart. So I certainly don't want to um, wrap anything up without giving you the chance to talk to folks again. Yes, thank Paul. Thank you, Paula. I just, I think um, what I want everyone to understand, the board of trustees took all of the comments very seriously. Most of the trustees attended at least a few sessions. I personally attended this session and we believe we brought back um, all the most important things the community wanted. And we think that we will be able to execute about 99.9% .9 of what you wanted the day we open that hopefully it is in August before school starts would be wonderful. That's all for me, Paula. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Cunningham. Run. And Mel, I couldn't agree more. We definitely are looking forward to the end of the pandemic. And I can't tell you, I've, I've been here with the library system for many years, and this is just so cool and kind of hard to imagine Deer Park being like this uh, amazing huge space with all of this exciting uh, offers for the lot for the uh, community and you know I know the staff is just <laughs> raring to go if they could move in tomorrow they would because it's so exciting so thank you very much we will keep you informed we captured these um, we do have a page on our library's website that updates everybody about each project so again the facilities master plan we have several in the works and Deer Park is one of our early projects as well and you can see here the QR code as well as the URL so I can't thank you all enough we had a fantastic turnout which does not surprise me at all you're a great community and a great library community we thank you and I look forward to seeing you all when we do have our big grand opening and have the chance to be out of this pandemic and talk to everyone Thank you very, very much.